Bergmuller's Arabesque is kind of one of those almost rite of passage pieces that I'd say early intermediate students tend to learn. And it's one of those pieces that we always look forward to hearing in the recital. But you know what? How do we practice it? So join me, we're going to take a look at some practice methods and techniques that you can use to impress your piano teacher. Now, let's talk about how to practice this piece. Often people will say, well, start at the beginning and we'll work our way through it. Fine, that's good. But you know what's even better? Start with the most difficult part. Now, I can guarantee you that's going to be around measures 18, 19. Let's take a look at them. What makes this difficult? Well, take a look at the fingering. First it starts going in parallel motion, then it goes contrary motion. So there's a lot going on here in terms of the movement. So you want to start with this. Just do hands separate first. Right hand three times in a row. Two more times of that. Left hand. Two more times. Now when you put them together, it's a different story. You want to make sure that you divide it up. Three times in a row. It's really essential that you include the first note of the next measure so you create a bridge. Why is that important? Let's think about this. Visualize this for a minute. You've got uh, two little bodies of land, right? And you've got a little stream in between them. All right, think about it. Either you jump over and you fall in the water if you miss, or you create a nice safe bridge. Okay, we want to create the bridge. So in order to do that, you have to include the first beat or first note of the next measure. Okay, that's hot spot number one. Now when we go to the beginning of the piece, another suggestion. Don't start too fast. The tendency is to start these left hand chords really fast. Let's see how that gets us into trouble. What usually happens is we start too fast, we're all excited to learn the piece, and then, uh-oh, the right hand's playing 16th notes. Those are a little more difficult, so let's stay away from that. Start off thinking about, okay, how fast are those 16th notes going to go? Then you'll be able to correctly place them in the right tempo. So start off slower rather than quicker when you're practicing. Another thing you can think about when you're working on this piece is what hand position are we in? That's an A five finger position in your right hand. Then we move to a D five finger position, back to an A five finger position. Another hot spot to look out for is what comes next, a measure seven. Rhythm's a little different. Before we had da ga da ga dum, da ga da ga dum, da ga da ga dum. You had your groups of four sixteenth notes and an eighth. This is a little different. You might want to mark in the rhythm. Okay, where does the beat line up with the left hand? Another thing is that students often forget there's a rest here. It doesn't go. Okay, no, there's actually a little more emphasis there. That's why he has that little sport sondo. It's supposed to be a ta da! It's supposed to be a surprise. And it goes back into this kind of spooky texture. That's another thing to think about, dear students, when you're working on this piece. Don't just think of it as notes on the page, right? Here's the thing this is just dots, ink on a page, okay? The music comes from you and the piano. It's a little collaborative effort there, and it has to come from your heart, okay? So you have to think about what the music means. Let's think about that very briefly. The very beginning, it's just chords, A minor chords. It's the beginning of your journey, okay? And this is your backdrop, okay? Maybe it's a spooky forest, okay? Think about that, and then here you are. You're searching around, you're looking up, oh, nothing too scary. Something jumps out at you, right? If you've ever been on one of those haunted mansion rides, something will, you know, really, really shriek and come out at you. That's what you have the opportunity and the privilege of doing when you play a piece of music. You get to tell a story without words. So think about that as you're working on the piece. That's another practice tip. Okay, another practice spot is your left hand when it has the melody. This very rarely happens. You're going to want to make sure you practice that by itself. Here's another clue. You can do something called ghost playing, where the right hand plays silently while the left hand plays out loud. Second step, let 
some of the notes sound in the right hand. While still keeping the left hand very present. And then you let all the notes sound in the right hand, but very, very softly, hardly press down the key. And that's a way to get the hands balanced. Now my favorite part of the piece is at the very end. This is what Bergmuller does, and he's a genius about this. The first time that we have a descending five finger pattern is at the very end. He writes risoluto, which means resolute, okay? You're gonna to wanna to practice that because there's a few jumps there, okay? And let's do that thing where we practice the bridge. Okay, create your bridge. We're gonna use measure 32, going to 33. Again, two times in a row. So those are just a few tips that you can use while practicing Bergmuller's arabesque. If you like this video, please be sure to share, like, subscribe, click the notification bell for more, and we'll see you soon.